When you're competing in multiple offers for a home, is a love letter from a buyer fair play? Today we're gonna to discuss. You guys already know I'm Shannon Ellison here to talk about the highly controversial subject in real estate today. Many times over the last few years, sellers have been delighted to receive letters from potential buyers and deciding to whom to choose to sell their family home to. But as the housing market continues to hit new heights over the past 18 months, buyers desperate to get a house have tried anything and everything to win the deal, from waiving all of their contingencies to paying the seller's expenses, offering um, vacation home usage, <laughs> and there's even a case of a buyer pledging to name their firstborn child after the sellers. Not joking. <laughs> buyers and their agents have been doing their absolute best to get creative, and the tactic of love letters introducing the buyer to the seller has come under fire lately. Early in 2021, Oregon passed a bill that banned seller's agents from sharing non-customary documents with their clients, and this law was passed in theory to help the seller avoid selecting an offer based on race, color, religion, and any other criteria that are prohibited by the Fair Housing Act. The National Association of Realtors has even warned agents that these letters might seem harmless, but could pose fair housing risks. A real estate firm filed a preliminary injunction against the new law that is supposed to go into effect on January 1st of this year. The injunction states that the regulation is both over-inclusive and under-inclusive. So the letter may say absolutely nothing at all that could lead to discrimination or protected classes. Also, new technology such as ring doorbells enable sellers to visually see everybody that comes by anyway. While it's true that when stripped of all excess, a home purchase is just another financial transaction, the emotional aspect of buying a home just can't be overlooked. For many people, it's not easy to take the emotion out of selling a home since it tends to be a place of really cherished memories. Still, the fair housing concerns the law brings up are relevant. So what does this mean for future decision making on offers that are 20% versus 3% or using a particular lender or investors versus a family buying the home? In the end, it comes down to the right to free speech against the right to equal treatment. Once again, I'm Shannon Ellison here to educate and navigate not speculate and fabricate. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinion on the subject. And thanks again for watching, guys. As always, I will see you next week.